All right, listen up. When you walk by faith, when you walk in the resurrection part of Christ, there is one thing you should always remember. And that is that when you go through daily life as a believer, or better said, as a saint, because once you walk in the resurrection power, you are a saint. As a saint, the only thing the world has on you is distraction, social distraction. The world will seek to set you up with bad people or with people who have deep-rooted issues afflicting them. Now, don't get me wrong. As a believer, you will encounter people with deep-rooted issues. Why? They will see the power that you operate in and they will experience the healing effect so they will get around you. You can expect that. However, some of those people with deep-rooted issues, they don't focus on long-term solutions. They're focused on being relief. So when they see you with this healing power working through you, they want to be around you just to take advantage of that healing power that flows through you. They're not there to learn and obey Christ. So those people want to call you all the time, want to text you all the time, or maybe they don't even want to call or text you, but they want you to be around just in case uh, they're upset and they have a punch back to, uh, to escalate upon. Yes, there are people like that. They want you around, but they don't want, they don't want to talk to you. Why do they want you around but they don't want to talk to you? They just want to punch you back just in case they can't handle things anymore. Look, not everyone that's broken wants healing. Not everyone that's wounded wants to be better. Not everyone that's sick wants a cure. That's something you need to learn. So, whenever you encounter people that have deep-rooted deep -rooted issues, but the only time you notice they're, they're reaching out to you is when you are fellowshipping, or when, with other believers, or when you are praying, or when you're getting something done, for some reason, they never manage to call you or reach out to you during other moments. It's only when you're occupied doing something for the kingdom of God that they end up calling you or texting you. Maybe you are doing some research for your own business and yet an individual suddenly calling you uh, say say they need to talk about something you say, okay i can do it you do it once or twice no problem but now you realize that for the past five months every time when you're about to do research for your own business so making a financial step in life this individual kept, keeps calling you because they have issues and when you look at it it's the same issue over and over again but then with other people now listen even if someone is a fellow believer if you notice that the individual goes through the same things over and over again, and they keep talking and, and crying about the same things over and over again, you realize, okay, is this believer, if it's a believer, is this a believer obeying the Holy Spirit? Are they fasting and praying? Or are they just escaping, uh, just like worldlings do? If that's the case, lower contact with that believer. Okay? Even if someone is a believer, you notice they're stuck, and Satan is using them, lower contact with them, or make yourself less available. Listen, just because one is a fellow believer doesn't mean we need to, you need to make yourself widely available to them, even to the point of Satan using them to hinder you. Because listen, a fellow believer who's not obeying the word, who's not fasting and praying, who's not facing things, who's not processing things, and who's not moving forward, such a believer is stuck. It's the same way an unbeliever is stuck. And even some unbelievers can see this individual is stuck. They talk about Jesus Christ, about uh, the risen Lord, but they're stuck. Such people, because they are believers, you don't expect Satan to use them. But let me tell you, Satan will use believers that are stuck, just to hinder you. Now, some believers need long-term fellowship for them to heal. So, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know this, that, hold on a minute. It's only when I'm making steps ahead or it's only when I go through some hard time in which I really need uh, to fast and pray this individual uh, keeps popping up listen if someone is an unbeliever and they only pop up and every time and let me say if they only pop up when you're active moving forward 
And every time you pop up, they don't contribute to you moving forward. It's all about them going through something. At some point, you're going to feel drink or think, hold on a minute. Seems like Satan is using this individual to hold me back. And you're correct. Well, Satan can do the same with believers who don't want to let go of the road. They're still believers, they're still beloved in Christ, but as long as they operate as worldlings, you need to treat them as a worldling. If Satan would only use unbelievers to hinder you, it would be too easy. Okay? But Satan knows that because someone is a believer, you'll be less on guard and you'll give them more chances. And I'm telling you, we need to cut that out. Everyone that becomes born again at, uh, must strive to be Christ-like and to walk in power. The whole church mentality of remaining, remaining a baby believer for the rest of your life, I'm sorry, but that's not biblical. Yes, we all begin as baby believers, taking small steps. We, we all have to mature in Christ to walk full in power in the right now. It's only then that you have long-term security and long-term safety. You ought to walk in the resurrection power of Christ. That's why it's called the walk by faith. Church taught us to be like babies, always going to church every Sunday to get a booster. That's what people get when they go to church, they get a booster for the rest of the week. Booster, 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 and they're stuck getting boosters. That's not the will of the Heavenly Father. Now, sometimes fellow believers get stuck on stronger believers just to get boosters. No, 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 it shouldn't be like that. The one you should rely on is the Heavenly Father. Absolutely, you rely on Him. And then you walk by faith and you can fellowship with fellow believers so that we can support one another. Absolutely, we should do that. But it shouldn't be that we take this church mentality with us when we fellowship, when we fellowship with other, one another. If you have this church mentality, you need to be delivered from it because that church mentality is a satanic mindset that will keep you back. And that satanic mindset enables Satan to take advantage of you. And if you have a believer who is not delivered from a church mentality, Satan can use that believer as an asset to hinder other believers. That's why it's written in the New Testament, judgment starts at the house of God. That's why in the New Testament, we are commanded that if someone is a believer and they persist in darkness, we should disassociate from that individual. Why? So that they can't be used as an asset to bring harm and pollution into our community of believers. We need to become more radical in this, saints. Because if we keep giving endless chances to fellow believers uh, who keep uh, playing around uh, with the world, then we might as well invite demons openly into our midst. Look, it's not just unbelievers you need to watch out for. It's also believers that are invested in this worldly attitude. And you're not being rude and you're not being mean. At some point, you need to lower contact because, look, if a fellow believer is not obeying Christ, they keep themselves open to demons. They keep themselves open to darkness. And darkness can take advantage of them. So, if you keep giving them chances to be close to you while they're open to darkness, then you, then you have interacted and opened yourself up to darkness. Yes, we walk by faith, we walk in love towards one another, we pray for one another, we support one another. That also means that we, how do I say, we correct one another and chastise one another where necessary. Okay? What's it for now? Keep on agreeing with Christ, you all. Be at peace. I'll see you next time.